Class 1 became the engine failure class on the Speyside, both the MG of Neil Cowan Jr. and the 205 of Stephen Crockett retiring with engine problems. On his first SRC event in the MG, Scott Peacock was left to cruise to a class win. Learning about the car setup on gravel, particularly about the tyre pressures, Scott was very happy with his day out. Leading the class early on, Robbie Beattie would roll in SS5. He carried on, but the roll cage was damaged and he had to retire at first service. Despite a big off in Talkers Wood, Chris Bailey and Alan Cow managed to grab a solid third at the finish. After retiring on the snowman, Jamie Stewart was happy the car lasted the distance this time out. Second in class despite stopping to check on a fellow competitor who had rolled in SS9. 40 seconds up the road, Tom Howie and Charles McKenzie were lucky to make the finish after they broke a rocker arm in SS8. Somehow the slightly unhealthy sounding sunbeam was coaxed all the way to a first class win. There was carnage in Class 3, with five cars failing to make the finish after a tough day's rallying. On his first event in the woods, Mull Jr. Ryan Ingram survived a visit to a ditch in Gartley to grab third in the class at the finish. Nursing their C2 home with diff and gearbox troubles, second in class was a solid reward for Russell Keswick and Laura Marshall's perseverance. Russell still saying they had a great day in the forests. Almost throwing it all away with an off in the last stage, Ross Hughes and Richard Crozier survived to grab a first class win of the season and the top C2 award. Finally some good luck for Ross. We were in the ditch in the first stage and clobbered the whole front right of the car off so and then it went into limp mode so it was a bit difficult and then uh, we, were, we were trying to gain some time back over the next few stages and then we had a puncture in the first run of Balak, well a mile and a half to go um, so we lost, lost more time there but we've made it up, made it up there in the last, the last three stages so it's been tested but we've got there in the end so yeah, it's good. Both Paddy Monroe and Douglas Watt would fail to see the finish in their escorts. A broken clutch cable caused John and Megan O'Kane to incur some road penalties, late leaving service. Any thoughts of a fight back were curtailed in SS9 with a rear puncture. This left them third in the class at the finish. After retiring on the snowman, Jim Robertson and Mike Curry were delighted to reach the finish this time out in the new Escort. Jim declaring the car to be a bit different to drive to his previous C2. More practice definitely needed. Taking a solid sideways win by over a minute and a half, it was a good day out for Fraser McNichol and Keith Boa. This result moving them into the class points lead.
Class 5 proved to be the unluckiest of the day with no finishers. Most cruelly robbed was Ian and Sandy Milne, falling into a ditch on the final stage while on the way to a Class 1. Sadly, the Skoda of Alex Perry and the 306 of Martin Crombie failed to make the finish. Limping home with a burst radiator, Scott Burness's third in class was enough to move him into the points lead in the class championship. And taking his first finish since last year's Border Counties, Grant McCree was happy to finally see the end of an event. Now he needs time to learn the car. The 29th overall, a class and a juniors win made it a solid day's work for Ali Curry. The Blue Fiesta almost one and a half minutes clear at the top of the class. Rudy Campbell's day ended with a mechanical failure in Talker's Wood. Fourth in class at the finish, Stephen and Marywood backed up their solid snowman result to maintain second in the class points. Borrowing his son's escort for the day, Willie Stewart was learning the dark art of sequential gearboxes. Third in the class at the finish, and no damage done, made it a good day out. Taking second this time out, it was another fantastic sideways run from Paul McElaine and Niall McKenna. They had, however, identified a small problem. They weren't going fast enough. Their words, not mine. Absolutely on the pipe, from Cooper Park onwards, Duncan MacDonald and Neil Ross dominated the class by over a minute. There were of course a few small dramas, a rear puncture removing a brake line in SS7. This apparently did nothing to slow the escort crew on their way to 17th overall. With a new engine in the BMW this weekend, Charles Stewart had discovered a few issues. Mainly the car now had bags of power and not much handling. This and some overheating issues saw the big Beamer grab third in the big engine class. Making a return after their monster border counties accident, Gordon Murray and David O'Brien were just happy to have a trouble-free run to second. Three minutes up at the finish, Greg McKnight and Harry Marchbank dominated the class and the two-wheel drives for the second event in a row. Despite some traction issues and being slightly shaken by coming across Gary Pearson's big accident, they managed 13th overall at the finish. They also have the bonus of sitting an impressive fifth in the overall championship standings after two rounds.